tried to do with the Nazis? Or, no. You think it would be smarter for them to make you think that you're winning? Make you think that we're rallying for freedom? And that there is a possibility that, you know, we're going to win and defeat these people? How do you, what do you think would work out better? I mean, they're going to bring this thing in real slick. Yeah, the police state's coming in and all that stuff, but, I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of Project Nesera. It's N-E-S-A-R-A, I believe. It's either N-E-S-E-R-A or N-E-S-A-R-A. I forgot which. But basically what it is is uh, it's an official government project, and the conspiracy theory behind it is that they're actually going to um, bring in a president who supports liberty and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and freedom. They're going to uh, possibly return to a precious metal standard of some kind, and they're going to make it look, they're going to draw us in. They're going to make it look like we're actually having a victory and we're taking liberty back. And right when we think that we got the top dog in the fight and we think we have them, Bam! That's when they lay the hammer down because that's how the New World Order works. When you think you have them, they have you. That's how they try to do things. It's how they've tried to do things ever since the Jesuits been running this beast for God knows how long now. So, I don't know, you know, if, if, you, don't, if you don't get it after that, I, I don't know what to tell you. All I can say is keep watching Jones and keep listening to me and keep listening to other uh, alternative researchers that aren't Alex Jones. And eventually, I'm very confident that you're going to feel the same way I do. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much where I am at with that issue. So, we're going to get back in to covering the news. I believe we left off right here. This out of Cryptagon.com, is it strange that FEMA wants to buy 140 million packaged meals with a shelf life of only 36 months for a specific disaster scenario? I'm sure that there are plenty of reasons why this isn't weird, but I'll just make a note of it in case coincidence strikes. Via federal business opportunities, FEMA, uh, FEMA procures and stores prepackaged commercial meals to support readiness capability for immediate distribution for disaster survivors routinely. The purpose of this request for information is to identify sources of supply for meals in support of disaster relief efforts based on a catastrophic disaster event within the new Madrid fault system for a survivor population of 7 million to be utilized for the sustainment of life during a 10-day period of operations. FEMA is considering the following specifications. 14 million meals uh, per day. Yes, 14 million meals per day. Serving size, 12 ounces. Entree not to exceed 480 calorie count. Maximum calories, 1,200 and or 1,165 per meal. Protein parameters, 29 grams to 37 gram kit. Trans fat, zero. Saturated fat, 13 grams, 9 calories per gram. Total fat, 47 grams, less than 10% calories. Maximum sodium of 800 to 930 milligrams. Requested menus to include snacks, i.e. fruit mix, candy, chocolate, and peanut butter squeezers, drink mix, condiments, and utensils. All meals kits must have 36 months of remaining shelf life upon delivery. Packaging should be environmentally friendly. Now, basically where this goes to is, uh, there is a, a fault line. Um, that runs, uh, it, it's a, I forgot the name of it. It's, it's, it's affected by, ale- it's allegedly affected by, uh, the oil spill in the Gulf, the BP oil spill in the Gulf. They're saying that because of the BP oil spill in the Gulf, uh, if you didn't know, the oil spill was supposedly actually a crack in the earth's crust, which I personally don't buy for a second, but according to the government, the BP oil spill was a gigantic crack in the Earth's crust, and because of this, it could affect this fault line that leads uh, up from Louisiana, I believe, into, I want to say, Illinois, if I'm not mistaken. And so, FEMA's getting ready for, um, you know, the possible support of 
uh, 7 million people uh, to keep them surviving for a period of about 10 days. So that begs the question, do they know something we don't? And if so, you know, uh, is there anything we can do to expose this or to stop it? Well, the answer is yes, we can expose it. Uh, we can get up on the radio show like I'm doing right now. You can talk to your friends. You can put it on Facebook. You can send some messages. You can email some people and let them know. And you know what? You might as well email the government while you're at it. Email your elected officials and let them know that we are aware that they're purchasing uh, 7 million, uh, or I should say enough uh, rations to keep 7 million people alive for 10 days. And we know about what they're saying about the connection of the uh, oil, sp the alleged oil spill in the Gulf to this fault line that leads up from Louisiana to Arizona. And we are also aware that throughout history they have been known to stage these false flag attacks or false flag natural disasters and that we know full well and understand and yeah I understand yeah this plan sounds a little bit Jonesy doesn't it for Mr. Derek to be conducting but hey Sleek was right Jones puts out about 90 percent good information again that's the best way to lead people astray I mean we're researchers we're the people that made it beyond the mainstream that made it into the alternative media they can't just give us the same kind of BS the mainstream news pushes forth. That's not going to cut it. You know, it's got to be much more accurate than that, but still spun to keep you in a mental box. And that's exactly what Alex Jones does. But as far as this article about FEMA, that's exactly where we're at. Um, if any of you guys are uh, out there listening right now, if you want to know more about that fault line, just Google it. Just Google, you know, fault line, uh, Louisiana, Illinois or Google uh, fault line BP oil spill and that'll tell you exactly what the name of the fault line is and where it runs you can find out a little bit more uh, about that story there and we will take this uh, story right here next out of the Daily Mail uh, .co.uk Headline, Grandma on Acid, Researcher Finds Rare Footage of 1950s Housewife in LSD Experiment. Next time you hear someone say, back in the olden days, we had to make our own fun. This is probably what they're talking about. An American biographer doing research for a book on pioneers in the field of hallucinogenic drug experimentation has stumbled upon footage of a prim and proper housewife struggling with the effects of LSD. The bizarre and slightly creepy footage shows a doctor dosing up the woman and filming the consequences. By now, of course, she's likely to be somebody's grandmother. Biographer Don Latin said he came across the footage while preparing a group biography of British writer Aldous Huxley, philosopher Gerald Hurd, and Bill Wilson, the co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. Mr. Latin said, quote, it's from a television program circa 1956 about mental health issues. The researcher Dr. Sidney Cohen was dosing volunteers at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Los Angeles. Down the hatch, and there's a picture of a subject drinking the lysergic acid and embarking on her first trip. Dr. Cohen, seen sitting at a table and wearing a lounge suit, his legs crossed in the classic I'm a scientist pose, interviews the unidentified housewife who is dressed in her best black frock. She tells the doctor, quote, My husband is an employee here at the VA, and he said they were looking for normal people, so I volunteered. Dr. Cohen asks, How do you feel about coming here and drinking this strange material? She replies, A little nervous, perhaps. In the unintentionally comical manner that seems to be the preserve of uh, 1950s training films, the camera zooms in on an innocuous looking glass of clear liquid on the table as the good doctor asks, Well, I think it's time for you to have your lysergic acid. Drink this down and we'll be back after a while and see how you're doing. As the housewife obediently drains the glass and Dr. Cohen smiles benevolently, a dramatic voiceover explains, this is a glass of water, colorless and tasteless. It contains 100 gamma of LSD-25, one-tenth of a milligram, the equivalent of one-six-hundredth of a grain. 
An ounce of this material will make 150,000 such doses. Let us observe the effect some three hours later. Unsurprisingly, the three hours later, the housewife is insanely high. She says, quote, everything is in color and I can feel the air. I can see it. I can see all the molecules. I'm part of it. Can't you see it? Dr. Cohen asks, how do you feel inside? She replies, inside? I don't have any inside. Mr. Latin said Aldous Huxley, who first tried mescaline in 1953 and wrote about it in his seminal book, The Doors of Perception, got Gerald Herod interested in the spiritual potential of psychedelic drugs. Heard then turned to Bill Wilson, guiding him on an LSD trip supervised by Dr. Cohen in the summer of 1956, perhaps in the same room we see in this video. Wilson, who started AA in the 1930s, thought LSD could help alcoholics have the spiritual awakening that is such an important part of the 12-step recovery program that he popularized. Heard and Huxley set the stage for better-known psychedelic research. Huxley's early work also inspired a more layman drug researcher called Jim Morrison, who called his band The Doors after Huxley's Doors of Perception. Alright, that's it. That's the article. I thought we were going to get into something uh, real interesting here, but that wasn't all that cool. Basically, this is just uh, another example and another piece of proof of there being experimentation with LSD done uh, on subjects who clearly, obviously, don't know exactly much about what the drug is going to do, and by, uh, by the looks of things, weren't really told much about what the drug would do either. And moving on, this will be the last article of the evening. This uh, hopefully will be uh, quite the interesting piece. Headline out of ScienceDaily.com. Mindfulness meditation training changes brain structure in eight weeks. Participating in an eight-week mindfulness meditation program appears to make measurable changes in brain regions associated with memory, sense of self, empathy, and stress. In a study that will appear in the January 30th issue of Psychiatry Research, Neuroimaging, uh, a team led by Massachusetts General Hospital researchers report the result of their study, the first to document meditation produced changes over time in the brain's gray matter. Quote, although the practice of meditation is associated with a sense of peacefulness and physical relaxation, practitioners have long claimed that meditation also provides cognitive and psychological benefits that persist throughout the day. Says Sarah Lazar, Ph.D. of MGH, Psychiatric Neuroimaging Research Program the study's uh, senior author. This study demonstrates that changes in the brain structure may underlie some of these reported improvements and that people are not just feeling better because they are spending time relaxing. Previous studies from Lazar's group and others found structural differences between the brains of experienced meditation practitioners uh, me or mediation practitioners and individuals with no history of meditation. Observing thickening of the cerebral cortex in areas associated with attention and emotional integration. But those investigators, uh, those investigations could not document that those differences were actually produced by meditation. For the current study, MR images were taken to the brain structure of 16 study participants two weeks before and after they took part in the eight-week eight mindfulness-based uh, stress reduction program at the University of Massachusetts Center for Mindfulness. In addition to weekly meetings at the included practice of mindfulness meditation, which focused on non-judgmental awareness of sensations, feelings, and state of mind, participants received audio recordings for guided meditation practice and were asked to keep track of how much time they practice each day. A set of MR brain images were also taken of a control group of non-meditators over a similar time interval. Meditation group participants reported that spending an average of 27 minutes each day practicing mindfulness exercises and their responses to a mindfulness questionnaire indicated significant improvements compared to pre-participation responses. The analysis of MR images, which focused on areas where meditation associated differences in earlier studies, found increased gray matter density in the hippocampus, known to be important for learning and memory, and structures in associated with self-awareness, compassion, and introspection. Alright, and if you want to check out the rest of that article, you can hit up sciencedaily.com, headline Mindfulness Meditation Training Changes Brain Structure in Eight Weeks. Quite the interesting uh, article there. Some proof that meditation does actually uh, change the structure of the brain and enhance its capabilities. 
This has been Derek in the Midwest. The show is In Search of the Truth. You can catch me back here every Wednesday and Sunday.